Hey, it's Chris from Data Rescue Labs. Welcome to another video. So, what we got here is a Mac Mini that I just finished uh, recovering data on. This one here has got a Fusion Drive. Um, it's a basically a combination of an SSD with a spinning disk, and it's a bit of a pain in the uh, A to recover from. Um, the customer asked if we could um, recover their data and still not have them reinstall the software so mm -hmm. given that it's a failing disk um, I figured well might as well try it um, so let's get to it so here it is packed pretty good I like seeing that and these are easy to damage in shipping uh, the aluminum body on these is um, easy scratched so Let's open this up and see what's inside. And here we go. Here's the computer. Nice little box. I think this is a 2014, if I'm not mistaken. And the customer also provided us the, um, the drive to copy the data too. So that's it here. All right, it's a Seagate. It's a decent drive. I tried talking the customer into using an SSD, but uh, they did not want to go with that option. So and let's just have a look. So to open it, you gotta remove the back plate, and uh, we see some uh, bunch of dust bunnies in here. So we're gonna clean that up, remove all that stuff we don't want it, um, and. I thought I had uh, the proper screwdriver for this particular computer, but I didn't. Um, these Macs come with uh, these weird um, security torque screws, I think, and they have like a nipple sticking out in the middle. So I was trying a bunch of different screwdrivers and I couldn't get it um, removed. And I promised the customer this to be done ASAP. So um, I was looking for some other screwdrivers here. and none of them worked and I didn't want to strip neither my screwdrivers all these screws because um, we don't want to damage these screws because then I have to find them and replace them and I don't even want to think about replacing them because uh, I'm pretty sure it's not an easy task so eventually I found a way um, I, you can take a tiny tiny flathead and stick it in between the nipple and the, the pentalopes uh, on the screws and it will actually unscrew you just have to be very careful not to damage the screws themselves This took some time and luckily I didn't damage the screws. Uh, I was being super, super careful. You have to apply a lot of pressure downwards and that will uh, loosen the screws. I guess uh, after this, I should probably order the proper uh, screwdriver set for this. So this back plate here, this is uh, an antenna actually. So when removing this uh, particular plate, you have to uh, pay attention to the antenna cable so you don't rip it. Uh, this is for the Wi-Fi and I think Bluetooth if I'm not mistaken. So once we have that off, that comes off right there. That's pretty good. And now um, you gotta remove a bunch of screws to get this um, heat sink off and the, and the fan. Actually, I think it's just a fan. Yeah, just a fan. So the fan comes out and there's a few more screws. You can see the SSD right there. This is the um, part of the Fusion Drive setup on this Mac. So I'm still looking for more screws to remove. Uh, there's few hidden screws. Well, not hidden, but they kind of hide the spot. I'm uh, gonna unplug the drives. Oh, there was one more screw I think I missed over there. And now we're gonna use two screwdrivers. They're gonna push the uh, motherboard out. So the motherboard has to come out. So to get to the drive, you really have to pull everything out, including the, the power supply. So here it comes out. And I think I forgot to uh, clean the lens on the camera. That's better. Uh, so I think the last thing to remove is the um, cable from the power supply. And now once that comes off, uh, the board should be free from the computer. So that comes out. And the last thing to remove is the um, power supply before the drive comes out. So that's power supply gone. And now we can remove the drive tray. And then both hard drives are on this tray. And there's the drive. Yeah, typical, I think it's Hitachi um, hard drive. 
you just few more screws on the caddy and the drive comes right out. And the drive is out. Now I'm just going to pop the ribbon cable off, the SATA connector, and here's the drive. So here's the new drive, we're just going to open the package. And two drives. So let's get over to PC2000 so we can image these drives. So now let's move over to PC2000. So uh, what we're going to do here is um, we're going to take um, the original drive from this Mac. We're going to plug it into port zero. And this will be our source drive. And then we're going to take um, drive uh, the target drive and plug it into uh, port one and once that's done we can move over to pc3000 software on the pc and here we are uh, first up power on both drives um, this way um, we can also go into the utility i'm gonna connect the utility just in case i have to deal with the heads later i don't expect the heads to be bad but um, uh, we'll set up the utility just in case. So we're going to choose our source drive. We're going to go next here, make data copy, and then choose our destination, go OK. And now we're just going to start the imaging. Um, I'm not going to build a head map right now. I don't think I need it. Um, I mean, I didn't swap the heads on this. There's no absolutely no point to build a head map right now. Uh, but here's the imaging. So I'm going to fast forward here through the imaging. This took a few hours. So here, we're, here, here we are a little bit time in. Uh, there was about... Uh, I think 50 something bad sectors. And you can see them there in these black spots and here's some more in different locations. And uh, here's the drive finish. I think it was 130 bad sectors in total. Uh, I changed the block size a little bit here at one point. I wanted to try rereading those bad sectors, but unfortunately those sectors were uh, beyond um, capability of reading. Um, there was just too much damage on the platters um, for the drive to uh, um, even with different timer procedures to read the drive, so uh, we skipped those. But I don't think that these these sections of the drive, sorry, that section of the drive was uh, much of an issue. Um, I forgot to uh, turn off the skipping here, so we will change the jump size back to one. And uh, I've tried different timer procedures, but obviously it didn't work. So uh, at one point I even tried setting it to ten thousand uh, milliseconds for timeout, but it did not read the sectors. I tried different. Uh, read write criteria but that wasn't working so uh, here's the fi final uh, score I guess uh, 152 sectors that were unread I looked at the file system I mean there's no point it's a fusion drive you can't see anything anyways and I see this person also has got a boot camp um, but yeah the drive was fully imaged and now we're just gonna uh, put this drive back in its um, uh, mounting caddy I guess and uh, put in the uh, SATA port and uh, start the uh, reassembly process. And now we can take it over and we can test it. And let's see. And it booted up. So that's the case done. Anyways, thank you for watching. Um, you guys know all the other YouTube BS. Subscribe, share, all that stuff. Uh, stay tuned. I have way more videos coming. I have great ideas coming up. Some more forensic stuff. Some more data recovery stuff. But uh, yeah, subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys in the next video.